and uh, you can I'll just leave it for now. Eh? I'll let you know. Uh, you, I said a few uh, very uncomfortable things as I taught on this subject of sacrifice. The Apostle Paul said that there will be people that will have a form of godliness but they will deny the power thereof. And it is very sad to have a form of Christianity but not experience the power of that Christianity. So the power of anything is in the sacrifice of it. So you can have a Christianity that you don't experience its power. So you have a form. A form is like a ritual. It's like mastering the way of doing things and just be doing them even if you are not sure whether you are doing the right thing or the wrong thing. So many believers, I do believe, come into a place of worship, begin to master the way things are done. We can sing, we can worship, we can cry, we can pray, or we can drop something on the altar and go home. But there are very few believers that live to experience the power of this thing. Go back a little bit to verse number four. It is my prayer for you that may you not just have a form and not experience the power. It is my prayer that may you have an encounter with the reality of this thing. This thing is real. Don't go about this thing as if it is a story. This thing is real. This thing got Paul from the horse. He lost his sight. It left Paul with a testimony that cannot be denied. This thing is real. Don't follow it like a story. Don't follow it like a group that you joined. Don't follow it like a place you go to on a Sunday when you don't go to work. Don't follow it like a religious alternative. This thing is real. But know this, that in the last days, bad times will come. Give me that in the Good News Translation. In the last days, difficult times. <laughs> Remember that there will be difficult times in the last days. People will be selfish, you know. Uh, let's go to verse number three and all those things. But this is the thing that is very touching. They will be unkind, uh, they will be merciless slanderers and all that. Let's go to verse number four. They will be, was it verse number five? They'll have a form of godliness. Now let's go, not go into all that. They will hold on to what? The outward form of religion. But reject what? The real power. They will look religious, but they will reject the real power in it. May this not be you. 
May you experience this thing. God is real. So ladies and gentlemen, as I teach on this, this is one of the subjects that is important we teach until we disagree with people. Because this is the key to experiencing the reality of it. It is not a form. It is not a religion. It is not a place we come to be encouraged. It's not a thing we join so that when we die, there will be contributions. It's not a place we came to meet with friends. This thing is real. And in these days, there are men and women that will hold on to the form of it, but they will deny, reject the real power. May that not be you. Now listen. If you will experience the real power of something, there's a price to pay. If you will get beyond a form into reality, there's a price to pay. There's a way to position yourself. And therefore, you can't just do what everyone is doing and experience the reality of it. There's a price to pay. Now listen. So as I began to teach last week, I said, it is important you don't provide to God your own understanding and expect God to supply what God should have supplied based on what God said. I'll repeat again. God has expectations. God has standards. Rarely will God edit his standards. God has his way of doing things. God has his conditions. And if you don't meet the conditions, forget what God said. You can't edit the conditions and expect the results to remain the same. Just supply what God asked for. And you will experience what God promised. I repeat again, supply what God has asked for. And you will experience what God has promised. But this is the thing. I have never seen, and one of my pastors was telling me this, I've never seen a man that has 3,000 get into the mall, buy a refrigerator, buy a gas cylinder, a gas cooker, buy a mattress, carry 10 pairs of shoes, Carry 20 kilograms of sugar. Get to the counter. And said, I love these ones. Even though I only have 3,000. But listen. When we are dealing with God, I don't know the demon that sits on our brains. We come to God with our 3,000. Now, I'm using money as an example. I'm not saying you can buy anything from God. And that does not mean you should be so fooled to undersupply what God demands. You get the two sides of the coin? The idea that the widow brought three mites, was it two mites or three mites or termites, whatever it is, and, and Jesus accepted it, has lost so many people. You know, with God, so long as, with God, so long as you give something, you can imagine. We go to the mall, we never argue when we get to the counter and we are told you, in fact, no one will go and carry a fridge with 3,000. They know, they, they just understand. That's why the mall has everything, but every man has a section where they fit. We have trolleys and we have the bags. If you, you can't go and buy a doom pushing two trolleys. If your own is doom, you pick your doom and you come doom to the counter. You pay and you go. Because cockroaches are your problem. And we don't argue. 
Nobody goes and picks a fridge and comes to the counter and says, but I love the fridge. You, you people should understand. There are so many fridges there. I've only picked one. No one dares that. But we come to God. Put Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. We come to God, verse 6 and 7 or 17, whatever. We come to God and God calls us deceived. We are deceiving ourselves. We want to deal with God. That are, Now, the mall has everything a man can afford to put there. We are dealing with God that according to Psalm 24, the earth belongs to God. The fullness thereof. But listen, he has put a price tag on things. You can't carry God's fridge with God has a price tag on his things. You can't pastor one million people with a price of 500 members. God has a price tag on things. Even as a pastor, you can't tell him, but Lord, I am your servant and you can give me anything. He'll say, I don't deal like that. Carry what you are paid for. You are a single lady, your price matches one mukora in the church. God said, carry that one. That's what I give you. Even on God's daughters, he has put a price. To the point that he asks, who can find a virtuous woman? God asks, who can find her? And there are men looking for women. But God said, this one, who can find? God says, there are women and there are prudent women. So God says, about, he, he says, wealth and riches you can get from your father. But a prudent wife, it is me that can give you. God has a price tag on things. Get angry if you want to. But pastor, just pray. I will not pray. If you don't pay the price of what you are looking for, you can't get it. God has a price tag on things. make me like Sonny Badu. God says go and study his life. If you pay what he paid, you can become him. You can't become him with the Both of you are praising God. Lord, am I not singing? He said you are singing. But go to quarry there. That is your place. That is your price tag. By the time they know you in three flats, that is the price you're paying. Let me put this. Sometimes you can think God is wicked. He's not wicked. Just that he has refused to be deceived. Men are trying to deceive him, but he has refused to be deceived. Verse, is it seven? Verse seven. Read it for yourself. One, two, three, go. Wacha kujishika hivyo ni ukweli na kuambia. Read like you know what you are doing. <laughs> okay? Do not. Okay? God cannot be mocked. Uh -huh. The thing you sowed. So to think I will reap what I didn't sow is deception. Let me say this. Sometimes when you look at God, you, you even think God is proud. God says, I don't receive everything. I don't accept everything. I don't tolerate everything. I don't endorse everything. I don't protect everyone the same. I don't deal with every man the same. I have my favorites. And I am God. Because I look at how man is sowing. I look at how a man pours out his life into something. And when a man pours out his life, I ensure that he gets in the same dimension he has sold his life. A man cannot pray the whole night. And another one woke up at, at 5 a.m. and began to touch his wife. Then they stand on the altar and have the same results. You left your house the whole night. You slept in the cold. You left your bed. There is something I give you. I can't give the idiot that has just woken up. That is God for you. If you don't pay for it, I can't give it to you. Get angry if you like. God is for us all. God does not go like that. You've got to elevate your price. To change your price.
Not all prayers are the same. Okay? With that at the back of your mind. So anytime we think that we can redefine what, we can redefine the expectation of God and then still have the same result, we are walking in deception. God is not mocked. Luke 6, 38. Whatever a man sows, that he will harvest. Go around breaking ministries, you'll harvest it. Go around lazing around in every ministry you join, you'll harvest it. There's no harvest for a lazy man. He only harvests laziness. God doesn't need to change. It is you that should change. Look at this. The scriptures we don't like, but I'm using them to analyze. What you put in is what you get back. Now look at this. Give, read it for yourself. Uh-huh. Okay. 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 Let's continue. Somebody say with the same measure. Repeat again with the same measure. Raise my mic. Shout again with the same measure. Okay, read. With the same measure. Okay. So when God wants to give, I thank God you have given. Then now he wants to give back to you. He looks at how you give. Then he uses what you give as the measure. You know what he's saying? I can't give you what you have not paid the price for. When God opens the offering bag, he knows how to visit men. When the offering bag is empty, God knows what every man gives. We use envelopes to fool people so that they feel comfortable in doing what they should not do. Because nobody can tell whether it's a hundred in there or a thousand in there. That is to protect you at the congregation level. But Jesus looked at how men cast in. And even after giving was over, Jesus called a conference on the giving. What happens in the room there? You mixed it and mixed it. He said, no, no wonder, no matter how much you mix it, I know your own. This is your own. Multiply. Angels, look for him. He dropped a tie. Look for him. Seven ties in one week. Is it not a miracle? What you gave is given back to you. That is to mean that God will never ever give you what you have not paid the price for. God has a price tag on his things. Let's come to daughters, is it? Let's come to women, then I get into this. <laughs> How does it go? Whoever pleases God will have her. Get that, put it there. If you please God, you'll get her. A prudent wife. Even while you are seeking to find who to marry, God looks at what you deserve. God looks at what you are paid for. When God visits singles conferences, he doesn't visit the one that is saying the biggest amen. God has a record of how you have been handling him. And you can't run away from it. That should be Proverbs. Leave alone who can find a virtuous woman. Let's look at the prudent, the prudent wife. Uh, the one who pleases God shall have her. Something like that. You can't have every woman. And God visits singles conferences. As people come in, whether they are being given flowers, God watches. Say, this one you have given flower, but ajafika apu. But ngoja. In the place of making choices, I will give this one what they deserve.
You didn't get it? Why don't you put a prudent wife then? Let's try to work with this. Houses and riches are, <laughs> are an inheritance from fathers, but a prudent wife is, oh, good, good. Let's work with that. So listen. There are things your father can give you, but there are things only God can give you. So if you have an issue with God, you can't have a prudent wife because a prudent wife comes from God. Now, the one that pleases God shall get her, should be the virtuous wife, should be Proverbs, just check Proverbs, um, uh, where the virtuous wife is. The one that pleases God, delights in God, shall have her. That should be uh, the virtuous woman. So there has to be the element of pleasing God to have some things. To have some women. Simply put, is that God has a price tag on his things. That you came to church does not always mean you can have everything you see here. Kama levo yako ni atroli. Sukuma troli. Levo yako ni kama ile mfuko mdogo. Ingia nayo. Kama ni dumu mekuja kuchukua. Carry the doom in your hands. You don't need a trolley. And when you get to the counter, pay in peace. Don't trouble people. Because that's what you are paid for. Okay? But whoever pleases God, Pastor George, why don't you get that? It should be in the same Proverbs 31, but I pray we get very specific to the verse. But he who pleases God should be in that same Proverbs 31. Because he asks, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. That is her price. Who can find her? But whoever pleases God should be somewhere there. Somewhere there. Which verse is that? So, the price of this woman is high. But there is a way you deal with God. You qualify for her. The things of God are paid for. If you please God, you can have her. If you please God, there are things if you please God, you can have them. Why? It means there is a price on them. Please, I don't want to get into the temptation to read the whole thing. It is there. If you check, you'll find it there. It is there. You have to please God. Which means there is a price. To everything you are looking for. So God will not do some things. Because you came and cried. God looks at the records of your transactions. Yes this one is crying. But the tears are in another level. Her sacrifices are wanting. So let her continue to exercise her lungs. With time she will learn. May this not be you. I didn't hear your amen. I said may this not be you. May you pay your price. Look for three people. Tell them pay your price. I didn't hear you. Tell another person pay your price. Tell somebody else this thing you are looking for my brother. There is a price. Pay your price. Yes. Pay your price. We'll come back to that later. So I say there is a way you can tell when you have sacrificed. I didn't say take, take your wallet, break it into two, and say man of God I'm giving this as a sacrifice. There is no as a sacrifice. There is only the sacrifice. I've seen people say, man of God, I've sent something there. Let that act as my tithe. Nothing acts as your tithe. There is only the tithe. It's not an act. It's not something going to act as tithe. That 
man of God, well, let me see what I have. Okay, take this one. Let that be like my tithe. God is specific. When you begin to walk with God, you will realize that God is very detailed. And God is very strict with his things. And God will not allow you take away what you have not paid for. It will kill you. Why should God give a virtuous wife to a crook? He doesn't do that. God must be sure he has deposited enough of himself into you before he gives you some things. <laughs> One time a great man of God was praying. Shadaba, Hila, Hilu, many days of prayer. And he was asking for something. And then when he got to that particular prayer, he had the voice of God. And the voice of God was very simple. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing. Then I will receive you. I will be your father and you will be a son to me. He said, Lord, but that God said yes. And this is what God told him. You see those prayers and those things you are doing, you can do them on the other side of the line. But this side of the line you want to cross. If you cross over with those things here, I will eliminate you. This is not for everyone. Young preachers can act shaking their hands for a cripple to walk. You can pay a cripple and put him on a wheelchair and shake your hands and he will walk and you will gather money. People thinking is a miracle. But if God will do that with you in reality, you must carry the, you must bear the marks of Paul. The real presence of God will, when you meet a man who carries the real presence of God, it has taken his all. God doesn't give some things as a gift. Some things take your life. God values his presence that he can't give it to every crook. You can remain with I have the presence of God by faith. But the tangible presence of God is reserved for some men. A man was in a meeting with broken hands. He had an accident. Everywhere in his body was broken. Plastered on the spinal cord. He looks like a dead man that has been embalmed. Was wheeled into a meeting. Put on a stretcher. The man of God, you know, millions of people gathered that night. The man of God had only entered. He had not prayed. The man whose bones were broken said, when the man walked in, it's like every bone in my body asked, what are you waiting for? Look for your neighbor and connect. He said, the man did not pray for me. When the man passed, I have heard preachers preach the love of God that they don't know. I'm born again, but for the first time in my life, I could touch the love of God. He said, when the man turned and looked at me, I thought heaven is open to receive me. I've never felt loved all my life. I ran out of the stretcher. The man has not spoken. The man has not prayed. The man has said nothing. The man has become the love of God. Do you know what? You see these young, young preachers. I have a good name. I want to keep a good name. I don't want trouble. Listen. <laughs> you can't get to that level if God has not allowed the good name you had totally buried. Those are not levels for people who has anything to keep. They die to being criticized. They die to controversies. They are here. Controversies are here. They are not even aware they exist. They don't mention them. They don't defend themselves. They died. 
So the only way you can have that when you're alive is to fake it. Shout, Lord, help me pay my price. <laughs> Say it again, Lord. I know I'm a crook, but help me pay my price. I need it. You didn't say it well. Say it again, Lord. There's a price to pay. Help me to pay my price that I may have what you have for me. God does not give some things just like that. So now, we come back to this. How do I know I have sacrificed? The test of sacrifice. I've given you four things. Let's go to number five. It could be the only one thing that I will share with you this morning. Then as we wait for the second service. The question you should ask yourself before you call anything a sacrifice. Whether it is a car. Whether it is a house. Whether it is a mansion. Whatever it is that you feel is a sacrifice. These are questions that will help you help you rightly interpret whether it is a sacrifice or not. Because you can give a car, it's not a sacrifice. You can give land and still it's not a sacrifice. You can give one million and still it's not a sacrifice. A man can give his bicycle and it's a sacrifice. Do you get me? You get me? That doesn't make a bicycle a sacrifice for everyone. I've seen people when they hear testimonies being read, pastor, all I had was 811 and I sent it. Then you see so many 811s and you understand, oh, according to them, if only I can give 811, Wakora. Because you are not that man and you don't know what 811 meant to the man at that time. Wapendwa, nilitoa television yangu, nikapeana na mattress yangu, hiyo December, nikaitwa kwenda Dubai. Oh, my wife bundled the mattress, bundled the television. We are giving it to God, we must go to Dubai. And you may give your mattress and your television, and you get a demotion to the village. You say there must be something in this. The first one is like pastor arranged with the pastor. No, just that you are not the man. You are not in his shoes. Is not every man in the Bible that God told, take your son. Be careful. So these are questions that help you establish. Have I sacrificed to God or did I play? Did I pay or did I play? Question number five, which will be number one for today. What is the risk in doing that? What is the risk? What is the risk, the risk factor in this thing I have done? What is the risk in doing that? When God told Abraham in Genesis 22, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go and offer him, the one question we need to ask there is that what was the risk in doing that? What was the risk in Abraham obeying that? Genesis 21 verse number 12. The question we can ask is this. If Abraham gives away, kills that boy, what is he risking? This is what he's risking. But God said to Abraham, do not, do not let it be displeasing to your sight, in your sight, because of the lad or because of your born woman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her. For in Isaac your seed shall be called. So Isaac is your seed. You know what a seed is? A seed is the promise of the future. So he's telling Abraham, Isaac is your hope. Whatever you'll ever need is in Isaac. If you'll ever have a generation is in Isaac. Your future protection is in Isaac. Sarah tells Abraham, 
get rid of Hagar. Hagar had a son. Sarah da, now, now. So Abraham is wounded. Abraham is feeling pain. But God tells him, listen to Sarah. Send away the woman. You don't need Ishmael. Isaac, in Isaac, this is the future. Even if Ishmael dies today, you are fine with Isaac. The future is in this boy. The promise is in this boy. Everything I've ever told you is in this boy. This boy is your life. That's why Abraham gave him everything. This boy is your life. Ishmael may die, it will not affect you. But if Isaac dies, Quisha. So for you to hear a voice that take Isaac, you must analyze the voice. How? Lord, how? Didn't you say that in this boy is my seed? And you even allowed me to get rid of Ishmael. Have you ever spent money knowing that you are going to get salary on Friday? Are you still here? Have you ever spent money knowing that Friday money is coming? Then Thursday you are told the company is gone. Everything is finished. That is how it sounds when God tells you get rid of, I, of, of Ishmael. Then he comes and says take Isaac. Go and, uh, Lord you are playing. What is that? Say take Isaac. Your only son. I know you are done with Ishmael. You can't even convince the mother and bring him back and slaughter him. God ensures he's done with what you could hide in. Then he comes for this. It is a sacrifice if it is risky to do it. The sacrifice is like when you are left with one ovary. And God says, give me that one. You tell him, but Lord, you promise you'll give me a son. He said, no, give me that one. That's a sacrifice. What is the risk in it? If there is no risk in it, probably it is a donation, not a sacrifice. Somebody shout, I hear. I didn't hear you say, I hear. So what is the risk factor in it? In Isaac, shall your seed be? A few things I want you to note. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are serving a God that you can't lose for, either you are fake or that God is fake. If you are serving a God you cannot lose for, if Isaac goes, you have lost everything. Everything you have ever worked for is gone. You are useless. You have lost everything. If you are serving a God that you cannot lose for, either you are fake or that God is fake. If it is about you gaining all the time, I doubt if it is the God of the Bible that you are dealing with. Because your love for God will cause you to do crazy and irrational things. My brother, you will be persecuted. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 8, put it there. If the God I serve is a God I cannot lose anything for, is an idol. If it is just about gain, gain. Three bullets of breakthrough. 75 prayer bullets that make you enter marriage. Those are the things you keep on hearing. After this you shall build. That is what has built your faith. This year you must change your car. You will walk from one harvest to another harvest. Your main prayer song is, you sugar my tea, you butter my bread. One day, hey Jesus, has been good to me. Those are your songs. I'm now teaching you Christianity. If that is the Christianity you are given, I'm sorry you are given deception. We lose for God. When we love God, we lose for God. 
When we love God, we suffer for God. Our love for God makes us do irrational things. Our love for God is seen by the things we can walk away from that could have pampered our emotions. If everything I teach you is how to keep material things, how to be careful about your money, ukiona mhubiri mwenye anaendea pesa zako, jichunge. Hey, this man is a true prophet. No, he's a false prophet. If you can't lose for God, you are serving an idol. If you can't suffer for God, you hear messages like, Jesus already suffered. I shall not suffer. Brother, you'll suffer. You'll suffer. To be single for seven years and you keep purity is suffering. If you have neighbors, somebody put four cats on the, in, in, in the Facebook. There's earthquake, the cat is sleeping. The house is burning, the cat is sleeping. Somebody's bed is moving in the neighborhood, the cat woke up. If you are single for seven years and you want to keep a testimony, you will suffer in this town. There were days I walk in Nairobi town in the evening. Nimebeba bag yangu nimetoka kufunga. Na unaona watu wawili wawili, wawili wawili. Wamevaa vibaya. You look at yourself and the number of the number of years you have not touched meat. Because of your Bible and Christ. Unaangalia mahali unaenda, navuka. Saa zingine sina fair. Navuka na mguu naenda nyumbani. Nimetoka kufunga. It was called suffering. God does not spare you from that. God will not come down your erection because you are born again. You will be erect, but when you think about the cross, say, Lord, I may do this thing, but let me just wait. It's called suffering. You will suffer. Then I preach to you, you shall not suffer. Brother, you will suffer. Sister, sometimes you'll get on Facebook and you see a chest. You have money, you have a car, you have a house. The only thing you don't have is a man. And you have read one useless book by Olo, a dragon called Sexual Era. So you are looking at a dragon and you are looking at this brother. And you are looking at your faith. My sister, you will suffer. A God I can't suffer for is an idol. Look at this. Paul says, yet indeed, I count also, uh, uh, yet indeed, I also count all things lost. Why? For the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered loss of all things. Losing things is suffering. I have suffered, I have suffered loss of all things. And count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Give me good news translation. The generation that, me I came here for a job breakthrough. I'm sorry you are walking in deception. That me I was told that if a Lord just touches your head. The kind of millions that will follow you. You are an idol worshiper. You are not born again. Get born again. Get saved. That me, I was told if you just step into that church, contracts will just be following each other. Contracts following each other. Now I've been there for some time. I don't know why contracts is not following me. Pastor Mbao, tell me something. If I want contracts to follow me, how do I do? You are a thief. May the Lord fish you out. Look at this. Not only those things, I reckon everything as complete loss for the sake of what is so much more valuable, the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have thrown everything away. I consider it all as mere garbage so that I may gain Christ. Message translation. Pastor, you are preaching, but when you touch my money, I don't like it. You are saying, Pastor, I want to serve God, but I have this idol. Look at this. Yes. All the things I once thought were so important are gone from my life. Will you serve God when important things are gone? When there's no promise of a husband. When there's no promise of a job. When there's no promise of anything material. As I lived in prayer caves, I had no promise of any car, of anything. 
I'm not discrediting prosperity, but the church is lost. Look at this. Are gone from my life. Compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus as my master, first hand, everything I once thought I had going for me is insignificant. Dog dung, chet guk. I've dumped it all in the trash so that I could embrace Christ. This is the thing. The God you can't dump everything for is not God. That's why one of the tests a man of God passes before God entrusts him with the great... Every time God wants to entrust you with the great ministry, he sweeps everything you have. If you are, you are preaching a gospel, you can't sell everything you have to put into it. You are a con man. Can I begin to wind up now? Look at this. Paul suffered the loss of all things. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 11. Now, what am I preaching? Before you become a man of sacrifice, this is what is meant by sacrifice. I can lose it all for Christ. Not because of a tragedy, no. Not because of an ancestral caste, no. For the sake of what God has told me to do. I can lose all, sell my house, sell all my cars, sell everything I have, take all the money I've ever raised, take it for the sake of what God wants to do. That is what we call counting it loss. Risking anything is losing it. And when you lose for God, you will find it in the future. God never gives a man what a man has never lost for him. Every genuinely great man of God will tell you, when God came to us, at the time of that building, we sold our house, we sold our everything. We never knew God was going to do this. This is the place where he comes and says, give me. If you can't, that is the last level you'll ever attain. He takes it over here, then you suffer, then he has deposited it here. The day, the day you get here, Say, do you remember? You say, Lord, ask for another one. Because that's how to work with God. You can't work with God on your strict budget. It doesn't work. Look at this. There's a blessing that will never come till you are reviled, till you are persecuted, till all kinds of evil are said and they are false against you. There's a blessing you can't get. That's why these men that are being heavily used by God, those are the things that made God raise them to that level. And now you have a young minister that wants to be good to the chief of their area. But wants to carry an anointing for millions of people. One must go. One must go. You can't please the chief and please him at the same time. Trying to build a good community name and building a ministry are two different things. There's a blessing you will never know till every man has the worst bad news about you. I didn't say. Jesus said, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Good news translation. Will you serve God? Are we not looking for good names? A well-dressed pastor and his wife. That is my pastor. That's my pastor. A beautiful church. Ah, that's where I go. And that's where there are things you can never see. For the sake of Christ, you will lose this earthly name. Look at this. Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. But today we have the followers of the Lord that want their profile picture to be liked by one million people. It doesn't work. There's divine hatred. No matter how much you pray, there are people God has ensured they will hate you. 
divine hatred. Some scandals are divine. To deliver you from the public. Because when you have a good name, you want to show your nose everywhere. Every occasion. And now, the only man of God that is loved is around. And people clap. Heaven is saying, who is that? My servant shouldn't be like that. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. How dare? How will men celebrate you? And then our prophets are full of, you shall be celebrated by who? Hey! Ah. Which gospel is that? Jainjili <laughs> is nobody's friend. Kia chunyi no ai. Kata min chunyo ai. Ai mata ai no no. Before God can make him be the hope of the family, the mother must give up. My mother gave up on me at some point. My teachers gave up on me at some point. One day my mother met me. I had been away for eight days. She didn't know where I was. So I'm coming back in the morning. My mother is going to the market with her fellow friends. I had, <laughs> I was coming from over 100 kilometers with slippers. Sugar cane was the offering that I got with my Bible. I'm singing on the road. So as I approached them, I saw this is my mother. My mother felt ashamed. I could tell after I passed because we remained with her for one minute talking. Those other ladies were saying, hey, the women were saying, whoever has bewitched your son, a good boy that we knew, what is this that is happening to him? I could tell my mother's shame. Is she still ashamed? Is she not born again as well? She went to confront my pastor that night. You will tell me. We are related in a way, but you will tell me. Wherever you have gone to, to do this to me, you will tell me. She's born again today. Many of you want God before men give up on you. God is not found where men are celebrating you. God is not found when men have given up. Many of you, there are things that will have to give up on you. And there are things you will have to give up. You want to touch this God. <clears throat> there are things you'll give up. Look at this. I didn't say go and become an idiot now from today. Say no responsibility now. I'm not going to pay rent. I want my mother to give up on me. That is not what I mean. I know some of you. Say pastor, thank you. My wife must give up on me. <laughs> because... <laughs> Many are dealing with a God who must pay them. Did you get that? Many believers are dealing with a God who must pay them. That's where prayers like by thunder by force came from. I'm marrying. One time I saw a service, women came with canes. They were canes to cane the devil who has chained their husband. You needed to have seen overdue sisters. In that service in the night. Shaking their bomb bomb. Caning Satan. Satan. You must release my husband. By thunder. By fire. By force. Where did all that come from? Because someone preached to us. That God must pay us. That he must pay us. That Lord has been serving you all this while. A God who must pay you. Nowadays you have started getting tired of him. You are asking him questions. And you have the audacity to write and say, man of God, I was asking God questions this morning. About my marriage. I don't know, but... Even the Bible says, come, let's reason together. Those are your scriptures now. Come, let us reason together. I was asking God questions. Many are dealing with a God that must pay them, but not Job. Job, the greatest man in the East, never dealt with a God 
that must pay him. Job chapter 2 and verse number 10. Raise your hands and say, Lord, if I lose, I lose. If I get, I get. But all the days of my life, I want God. And I want a God I can lose for. I want a God I can clear my accounts for. I want a God that if today I have nothing because of obedience to him, I still want to obey him. Look at this. Not Job. Job's wife came to Job and said, Job, insult God so that, God, so that you can die. I don't think now serving God can make us rich here. How can things happen like this? How can we give God our one million? Look at our lives. How can we, uh, 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 we have been doing this, and uh, then uh, God should have done this. It's a level. When you grow, you'll outgrow that. Look at this. But Job said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. Shall we indeed accept good from God? And shall we not accept adversity? Why do you want us to change when adversity comes? Why do you want us to change when we are not getting what we used to get? Why do you want us to change when God has taken everything that he gave us? Must we now change? My wife, you are stupid. You talk like a stupid woman. It is stupid to say such things. That ah, we have accepted the good times when God blessed us, we danced. When God visited us, we danced. But now that nothing good is happening, we need to leave God. You are stupid. Job was saying, if I lose, God remains God. Job was saying, if you take away my children, you are still God. You take away my house, you are still God. You take away everything I have, you are still God. I lose my name, you are still God. I lose my reputation, you are still God. I lose everything I've worked for, you are still God. I gave, I never saw it, you are still God. Ladies and gentlemen, sacrifice is losing for God and never going to demand it. Allow me to close. Can you lose for God? Look at this. Job said, no. The three Hebrew boys, Daniel chapter 3 from verse 16. The three Hebrew boys said, Nebuchadnezzar, let it be known to you that we do not bow to your idols. We will not. And we never do that. Your idols, we can't bow to them. The God we serve is able to deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, the believer today, when you hear them, I shall marry. The Bible says none shall lack their mates. There's no room to lose. As a pastor today, you must never preach suffering for Christ. Because your ministry will be empty. Because it's a God that must pay. By this Friday, the Lord must restore. By tomorrow, you must see. When I am done, you must have. Which Christianity is that? A sacrifice is loss. Look at what they say. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Verse number 18. But if not, if not, if I never get married, if I never get a harvest from the one million I give, if I never get paid for my labor before God, if my life never changes like other people's lives have changed, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. It's called accepting to lose. I have served you all these years, but for the sake of this, if you don't deliver me, I will still serve you. But we have been taught a God that must pay us. 
They could have told Nebuchadnezzar, if he doesn't come, we'll tear our Bibles. Thank God there were no Bibles. If he doesn't come, we'll renounce him. They said, even if he doesn't come, God has gotten to our blood. God is in our system. God has become our life. Denying God is like denying our lives. We cannot do that. Can I hear an amen? Listen. Because we don't understand what a sacrifice is, that's why we say things of this magnitude. I gave God my money. I'm waiting for the harvest. Do you know there are even people who call and say, a hey, man of God, I just wanted to I'll let you know that vile ulisema watu wa 12 moja nilitoa lakini wiki naenda kuisha sijaona kitu. So I was following up. That is your business idol, not God. I gave God my money. I'm waiting for the harvest. I gave and never saw it. Return my money. A man of God, not that we are demanding, we are saying, Ile 50 to Lipiana last week. In Asa to Saidia Mahali, Kama Mungu Bada Naona, Wizi Piana Sai, to Dishe, to Malize Ish, Guli Agent, Halaf Bade to Kipata Tatoa. We have seen those things. I'm not giving you empty stories. The, this generation of Christians. I've been in church for eight years, yet no husband. I should wake up and try elsewhere. Must I die here? Where will Lingia Kings Lin? Apo Shauri Moyo, Shauri Moyo. Wali watu watu wa Shauri Moyo na waonanga. Siyata nani uliona litoka, kapataka mzee kingida hapo wakawana. Si uliona picha kwa Facebook. Haki, haki right now. I can't wait. The way I'm feeling in my body. Sahi, sahi. Mi, hai, akapana. Hata mungu alisema, nitawalipa. Na kama mungu alipi, ni kama hii madabau haina malipo. Tuende kwingi, kwingine. You have entered the trap of Satan. I've been in this church for eight years. No husband. I should wake up and try elsewhere. People are after using God. Philippians chapter 2. Give me from verse 20. People want to use God. People are coming to God not busy with God. People are coming to God because of what God has. Mungu. Umesema lazima tukuabudu. Tunakuabudu. Mungu, what about that? You say, no, I've, I've worshipped you. I've worshipped you. Now give me. It's like forcing your father to bless you. God knows when your clouds are full. When you start entering traps like, but pastor, even boot camp prayer, I prayed until 12. People ended at 10. I went up to 12. What have I not done for God? You are after using God. You are saying I have done my part. God must do his part. You are saying God has slept on duty. You are in a hurry. You want to use God. Ole wetu. Wanaotaka kumtumia mungu. Vibaya. Look at this. Paul said, I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. Verse 21. For all seek. Paulo aliangalia siyo leo. Aliangalia kasema, all are seeking their own. We are in a generation ukiona mutu wana sweep. It may not be love for God. We are in a generation if you find someone sleeping in the church. Alisikia ushuda ya ndugu fulani alilala kanisani. Kuna kitu natafuta. Natalala mwezi moja. Miezi miwili. Miezi tatu. Hanauliza ndugu ya ulilala miezi ngapi. Mimi likuwa miezi miwili. Sasa mina ingia tatu. Naona kama atatenda. Because siyo kupenda buwana. Ni yale buwana na ezatenda. Kuna waubiri wanaenda maombi. Baba ni pake. Nipe mafuta. Baba ni tumie. Angalia ni meacha ugali. Ili nikirudi kwa hiyo mji. Matajiri ambao wamedharau wame injili. Nikiweka mkono wapate uponyaji ya kansa. Walete mamilioni kanisani. Maisha yangu ibadilike. Diyo mana natafuta upako. All are seeking their own. This morning, someone sent me an, a sacrifice of 87 shillings, I think, 
I said that chakula ni ngumu. I send them back money to buy food. The person began to cry. Because I'm not in collection. I'm not collecting. I'm not in need to pay bills. If God never found my heart those years, I'll not be here. And my concern still is, Lord, find my heart. Why am I doing this? Is it to build a house? Is it to build myself? Because you can give the, drunkards have the best houses. They didn't collect an offering. And you can give me that without an offering. Why am I in this? Why am I doing this? Why am I praying for men to be saved? What is my goal? What is your mindset with join us this Sunday? What is the mindset? What is the motive? Because God doesn't read what you are doing. God reads the motive. What is the motive? Why Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Is it to collect money? What is the motive? All! Paul looked at them. Everyone around Paul. Kuna dance uliona mtu akidance ameona ndugu fulani kwa kona all seek their own not the things which are of Christ Jesus which means people have come to use Christ without caring how he feels that's why we can't give him pure worship that's why we can't lay prostrated for one hour that's why we do mechanical worship for 20 minutes. Because we are waiting for that time when the man of God will just greet someone and he'll find money in his bank. That's why I came. Ever since we joined you, man of God, money-wise, things have changed. And we are here, man of God. Which means the day money begins to go down, we will find another place where money goes up. And so, all seek their own. That's why if someone is punished and told from today, you are not serving me, they go to another place because they were not building Christ. They were building the belly. All seek their own. Listen. Not the things which are of Christ. Listen. Listen to this. So, if you can't lose for God, you don't know what a sacrifice is. A sacrifice is when Ishmael is gone. And now God wants Isaac. And you obey. When you sacrifice, you lose. The perfect definition of a sacrifice is loss. Loss. That's why people are not ashamed to seek a posh house from an altar that is looking like a weird shrine. I've gone to churches and you'll see the cars people have parked outside. And you see the state of the church altar. And you look at how everything looks like. And then you preach a message and you say, I want to pray for people that would want to build a house better than what they have now. And the same people will run to the altar that looks like a shrine. To collect a house for themselves. None of them will think, why should the house of God look like this? Does this look like Christ? Because we are after our own. Listen. That's why people don't mind a hungry pastor praying for them. Almost to death. They never stop to look at the state of the man so long as they can drain what the man has. Because all seek after their own. Allow me to say this. It must be offensive. I've never done a fundraiser for any car. I've given out cars. Listen to this. How do you drive a Porsche car that is fully paid for? Going for a Harambe man to buy your pastor's car. Try to weigh the two things. How do you drive the latest X7? Going to a fans drive. Geared towards buying your pastor. Brand new Toyota pastor. 
Alafu ndio ndizi pite. Nani anachukua ndizi na 500? Then the owner of the X7 stands. I'll buy it at 2000. I told you I was invited in a fans drive to buy an elderly man a car and I told them I will not come I'll give him the car Don't mock God Don't mock God We think we fear God but we need to reanalyze what the fear of God is Don't mock God Don't call your friends after you build your mansion then you gather your friends to help you raise money to build for your father Alafu naambia baba yako mzee simama wapigie makofi kama tuletea pesa ya kukujengea Then baba yako anasema asanteni kwa kusaidia kijana yangu and your mansion you are built without that What you didn't do to build your house don't do it to God's house If you never took a loan to build anything for yourself Don't take a loan for God's work. When we were buying that land, there were groups that were willing to go take loans. I was just smiling. We bought those millions without a loan because I have never taken a loan to do those things. And it will be an insult to do it to God. Your mind needs to wake up to what is called a sacrifice. Don't mock God. Don't play church. Don't play games. Don't look at people sasa wengine wametoa ngapi? Don't do those things. What you have not you can't you can't drive a Porsche car to a fundraiser that is going to buy your pastor a car. And that doesn't mean I came to insult people to buy their pastor's cars. No. We've never done it here. And if I ever know that there's a fundraiser to surprise me the car, I will scatter it. One time I told some people you haven't reached the level of honoring me yet. Allow me to honor and show you how to honor. I will never complain. All of you, my birthday, hata amge ka pamoja, hata muniweke kwa kwa helicopter. What rubbish is that? That I come and insult you, insult you. Eh, sasa vile mko wengi hivi, mnafaa mfikirie, pastor apate shamba. But you will never hear that. One day he told me, it is not these people that can take care of me. No. I preach like you don't exist. Because there's someone who called me. I am in his will. I am his bill. Listen. Don't mock God. Can I close? Doesn't it sound funny? That millionaires have gathered. Millionaires. Tumeona vile pastor wetu anateseka. Pastor simama tuombe tukianza hii arambi. Then the man of God stands, Father, Baba, Tazama hawa watoto, Hameleta pesa, Kutuwa mutu mizi wako kwa shida, He is cursing you. An intelligent son doesn't do that. Don't do a fundraiser in the public to buy your father clothes while you are wearing a designer suit. A wise child in the family does not force the others. He begins to build. The others begin to feel shame. What can we do? He begins to build for the father. The, listen, I want you to come to a level, George. Sit, remain seated. I want you to come to a dimension where you don't say, let me look for 10 brothers in the church. You prize it and buy it and start it. And then others, who is doing this? Whoever wants to join should beg to join should not be begged to join. At the end of it all, all is vanity. A day is coming, you'll face God alone. And before I go, I want to ensure the name of the Lord is honored. The name of the Lord is glorified. Lord, if no one is willing, give me the privilege to carry the blessing. Allow me to do it. Lord, anoint me that miracles may bring money. You are praying. Mtu wa Mungu anakufa mstuni. Baba, katika kizazi hiki unajua mtu hawezi heshimika bila upako. Unatafuta upako kuheshimika. Bwana, 
huduma yangu iheshimike nikiingia tu hivi miujiza zianze baba heaven is watching you <laughs> feel the church big offering can give me a better life so the whole night you are anointing seats nimewafuga hapa nimewafuga hakuna mwenye atatoka hakuna mwenye taigi hapa natoke baba na wakiingia wakikaa mfuko yao na guzaga kiti sasa napaka hii kiti kutakuwa na covenant katikati ya mfuko yao na hii kiti wataagusha wataagusha angalia mtumishi wako wataagu why don't you tell god angusha it's easier to tell god angusha than to tell god aweke mafuta kwa mfuko ya mtu ndio huyo mtu angushe in my life severally severally i've seen god drop it directly i have confidence i have confidence in you I have confidence in god between god touch so and so and god give it to me which one is easy Lord, I want to be more influential than all other pastors. Give me this special grace. Wrong prayer. That's how we go to I'm tired of giving. Nothing is changing because you are giving for things to change. You are a crook. You are using God. What is a sacrifice? In obedience to your voice. Without thinking of what I will get. Lord This boy is an orphan. He needs school fees. He has nobody else. How much is it? I've never paid fee no matter the amount for any great for any no matter what was needed. I have never come back and say let's raise an offering. Kuna huyu kijana akona sisi na sasa ameingia university. I've never done that. Don't do it. Don't beg to go and help. I don't know if you got what I said. Don't open WhatsApp groups to beg people so that you can go and build your name. Don't go to America and lie with the pictures of Turkana children. Collect dollars, come here, do shaky shaky things and buy a V8. You have risked your generation. I've paid for orphans in millions without raising an offering. Some of them work today. Some of them pay tithe. I paid their fee. One day I called people here who had school fees arrears. They came out in Jogoro, eh? By the following day, all that fee was in those accounts. If God has called you to help the poor, don't be another pauper trying to help another pauper. No God will place that as you step out. You truly really went to help the poor. Don't do things like sanyeni zile nguo ambazo amhitaji Kama kuna sufuria nyingine siku hizi unarushianga umbo anakula ndani kuna shosho anaweza kulia hiyo sufuria leta Stop gathering curses on your head If God has called you for something be willing to lay down your life for it This is what you do God has called me to build an orphanage and help the poor God has given me one three plots there one car sell the plot sell the car Tell God when you call a man he has to kill what he has. I'm putting this in the orphanage. Mahali taishia Mungu nitakutazama. Umeanza kwa msingi sawa na Mungu. Don't beg men to join what you are afraid of jumping into. You are driving a prado around begging men to give you contributions because you want to go and help the poor. Who are you deceiving? Pastor is it wrong to give into foundations? I didn't say it is wrong. But I'm talking about a sacrifice. The reason men raised foundations and they died the bad way because it was a business. But the time I gather from the Kenyans on Facebook, then I deceive the real Americans. Then put together, put aside mine, give the orphans a little bit. I went to see an orphanage where children are and it was raining. The man Running the orphanage, if you saw the German car, I looked at the maze that was in the store for orphaned children. And he had gone to take pictures to send reports. 
That day, I had no car. But something told me, watch this man. He will not end well. He never ended well. Be careful with this thing called by the name of the Lord. We are not in a business. Be careful. It may look hard, but be careful. Be very, very careful. The money we receive here is blood. This money you see is blood. The money you are gathering in the name of widows and orphans. If you find anybody anywhere on Facebook raising money for any orphanage in the name of Maurice Olo, cancel it. Give up on it. I don't do those things. Don't fall a victim. Stand up on your feet. Raise your hands and say, Lord, I didn't hear you again. Say, Lord, teach me what a sacrifice is. Listen, if you give it and you don't feel like you have lost, it's not a sacrifice. The sacrifice, kama ni pesa ukitoa, unasikiango mepotea. Unasikiango najiuliza swali, what have I done? It is a sacrifice. Because it is like a loss. No, no, Kisha, umesanya pesa unaona sasa na azanza kujenga. Then you hear a voice. Then you look at your age and the children you have. And you are hearing a voice, take that money, give it to God's work. It's a sacrifice. Because after you do it, number one, unajua hauna kazi. Uli retire. And this money was enough to build a house where your children will live in. This is your inheritance. This is your future, Isaac. If I do this, my future is gone. How are total Tangalia nini? It is a sacrifice. And that is what attracts God. God is attracted by our emptiness. God is attracted where our flesh has died. God is attracted where our intelligence has bowed down. God is attracted at a place where you can't explain it. You know one time I looked at a daughter here. The husband just lost a job like this. I know their state. She told me this is everything we have. I know her. I know she's not lying. You see, instead of having something to hold on to, I've decided to ensure God has everything. That is a sacrifice. That's a sacrifice. God is not intending to walk with us when we are alive. No. God is intending to go with us when it is none of us and it is all about him. Open your mouth and speak to God. Speak to the Lord. Speak to God. Please speak to him. Speak to him. Speak to the Lord. You can speak in other tongues, but speak to God. This is between you and God. This is between you and God. You cannot deceive him. You can't deceive him. We can't live a life of deception. We can't take what we didn't order for. We can't have what we didn't pay for. Open your mouth and speak to him.